guys, so welcome back to Bama Girls Cafe. Today, I'm so excited to be back here giving you guys another video. I just want to say thank you to all my new subscribers, all the subscribers who've been coming back. The channel is really, really growing at a rate that I have never imagined. I'm like at 210 subscribers. It took me forever to get to 100. So I'm super, super excited to be breaking the 200 mark. Y'all, y'all just don't know how much this means to me. So, today, we're going to be making homemade, old-fashioned fudge. I love fudge. This is the best time of the year to do fudge. It's coming up on Christmas. Thanksgiving is coming up in a couple of days. Christmas about to come around the corner and slap us across the face. And I just think that fudge and chocolate-covered um, pretzels and strawberries are just really nice touches to have during the holidays when you're doing little holiday parties. You want to just take a little something that's cute, easy to work and show off and be a little fancy. Um, so I think fudge is one of those things that you can definitely not go wrong with. This recipe is going to be soup, soup easy and I'm so excited to bring it to you guys. We're going to do one batch of old fashioned fudge. So some things you're going to need. You are definitely going to need a candy thermometer. Making fudge is not as hard as you would think, but you definitely need to be aware of the temperatures at all times. There are two key temperatures you're going to be looking for. That's the temperature to when your chocolate is ready to be taken, um, when your fudge is ready to be cooled down and you want to start beating it down and adding your butter and stuff. And then you just have another temperature that you just want to watch so that your fudge will set right. So you're going to definitely need a good candy thermometer. I found this one right here at Beth, Bad, and Beyond, and it was like $9. <clears throat> You're going to need an 8x8 dish. Now, y'all, I really want to talk to y'all about this dish because I have been looking for a really nice um, 8x8 or 9x9 um, dish like this. I have uh, one, but not really fancy. And I picked this one up from Walmart, and it was like $5. This is just the Pioneer um, dishes. And it's really heavy. It's like super super heavy um the quality of it is just amazing so i was very happy to be able to pick this up so you are for this recipe you're going to need an 8 by 8 pan because this is um this this is what the recipe calls for um i am going to be using pecans in mine some people don't like nuts in their flesh but i like nuts in my flesh so we are going to be using some pecans so you're going to need a cookie sheet because you're going to need to roast the pecans you're going to need a knife and you're going to need a cutting board for your pecans. You're going to need some whole milk. You're going to need two cups of sugar. A half cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. You're going to need some vanilla. You're going to need butter. And you're going to need a really good um, saucepan. Because, baby, you're going to have to cook this fudge. And you're going to have to wait pay really close attention to it and also when you're doing fudge it is very important that you use a wooden spoon because that's going to help to break to bring the um, consistency of the fudge together you definitely never want to use metal when you're making fudge so with that being said you guys let's go ahead and get into this video yes honey it's about to go down in the kitchen here at Bimbo Girl Cafe because we're about to get our life and make some old fashioned fudge like your grandma used to make back in the day and it's going to be banging. So please stay tuned in my loves. Alright guys, so the first thing we're going to do is you're going to need separate from this butter, you're going to need a separate um, set, a separate thing of butter and you're going to need about a tablespoon and a half. So we can roast these because now when I roast my pecans, I like to set the oven at like 370, 375. So we're going to start out with just a little bit over a half a cup of pecans. And we're just going to give them a nice chop because you don't want them to be too chunky. And I love pecans in my fudge. Like you don't have to use this much. Put as little in as you want. Or as many as you like. You can use uh, almonds. You can use walnuts. Um, you can use um, cashews. I can't pronounce that word right, y'all. But any kind of nuts you like. Um, you can use macadamia. It just really depends on what you like. Add in what you like when it comes to this part. So I'm just going to keep giving these a chop. 
I already have my oven heating up. And after we get these chopped up, we're going to go ahead and add them on the cookie sheet. We're going to add a little bit of um, salt. I like to use sea salt or kosher salt. I don't really care for table salt when I'm baking unless it's for like a cake or something. So I prefer the sea salt because it's going to give you a little bit of um, savoriness in the recipe. So yeah, so let's just keep giving these a good chop. I don't know y'all. I don't know if I'm going to use all of them. But whatever I don't use, I will just put to the side because I have a butter pecan cake I'm going to be making for Thanksgiving. Yes, butter pecan cake. If you guys want to see that recipe, then definitely me a message down below because it's one of those old school cream cheese um, butter pecan cakes. It tastes like butter cream, butter, butter pecan ice cream. I'm so sorry, y'all. But it is so good and it's one of my favorite cakes and it's one of my favorite cakes. Eating is one of my favorite ones, you know, to make. It takes a lot of love. All right, y'all. All right, so now we have all of our pecans all chopped up. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna just place them on this cookie sheet. Put that to the side. And we're going to just take a little bit of salt. Just a little, not too much. And then we're going to take this butter and we're just going to pour it all over those pecans. And then we're going to just toss them. Now you really want to watch your pecans when they are in the oven. You don't want to leave them in for more than anywhere from two to three to five minutes. I'm going to say three to five minutes, but keep your eye on them because they cook really quick. And once we get these in the oven, we're going to come back. And we're going to pull them off of this sheet because if you leave them on the cookie sheet, they will continue to cook. Nuts cook really fast and they will burn to bejesus if you don't watch them. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to place these in the oven. Like I said, 370, 375. Halfway through the process, you want to open the oven, just move them around a little bit on the pan, put them back in there for another minute and then take them out and you want to put them on a plate with a paper towel so they can cool down and that will stop the cooking process because you definitely want to stop them from cooking or they will burn okay nobody wants burn pecans when they making desserts kind of not good but to each his own okay i'll see you guys back here in a second as soon as the pecans get done Alright guys, so we have our pecans out of the oven and they are done and it is piping hot. Let me switch hands and here we go. So they're all toasted. We have a paper towel down on a plate and we're just going to go ahead and put them on that plate. And you want to get all of them off the pan. Every last inch of it. You don't want to leave none. Take all your pecans off, honey. Crumbs and all. <laughs> okay, so now we have that done and what I like to do to... Ooh, that was hot <laughs> to stop them from cooking I like to just spread them out on the plate a little bit and let them cool down and this is perfect they smell so good all right so you guys this is what the pecans should look like once they have been roasted with a little bit of salt and the butter this is per shot okay they didn't cook too long they didn't cook they cook just enough just perfectly okay so we're gonna let these cool down i'm gonna go ahead and get set up so we can start making the fudge y'all i got some new equipment i told y'all i was coming back y'all i'm ready to slay bimber girl cafe so we're gonna go ahead and get set up and we're gonna get ready to make this fudge honey yes honey we're gonna make this fudge we're gonna slay this fudge mm-hmm Alright guys, so we are back and I am trying to like really get my life together here on Battle Girls Cafe. So we officially have a little cooktop today and it's was like, I got this from Walmart today and it was $19 and I was really excited to get it because this is really going to help out when I'm doing recipes for you guys. So we're going to sit this to the side, we're going to go ahead and let it start heating up. So here, our dish, the Pioneer dish. 
we're going to take this dish and we're going to just take a little bit of butter and we're going to just grease the pan with our hands because if you don't do this part then your fudge will stick and you will not be able to get it out. So you just want to make sure you get this all around the edges and the corners of the pan really good. You don't need a lot, just a little bit. A little bit of butter goes a long way. You don't want too much, but you definitely want to make sure you grease this pan up. up y'all we all greased up we all greased up I'm gonna grab a paper towel and just like so it's just not too much get a little bit of the excess off and just smooth it back out again all right so now we have that done we're gonna go ahead and put this to the side and we're going to move our little cooktop over and we have it on medium right now so the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and you want to throw in your sugar your cocoa powder and your milk and you want to just get it stirred up now once you get this all stirred up you don't want to keep stirring you want to kind of just let it sit to itself and just hang out because if you keep messing with it once you get everything incorporated then it's going to make your fudge not work together well so we're just going to keep giving it some this and I'm going to grab a whisk real quick to the pan. Just to get the milk and the lumps out. You do need a whisk for that. But then the rest of the process is going to be all wooden spoon. Just to get all the lumps out. Because you have a lot of lumps from that cocoa powder and the sugar. I had a glass bowl so you guys could see this but I don't I mean a glass pot I'm going to start looking for some glass pots just for these videos because I think it'll be really helpful so basically what you want to do is you want to just leave it alone you want to let it come up to um, a boil when it starts boiling you want to take your candy thermometer and you want to place it in there and when it gets to 238 you want to cut it off and you want to let it cool down to about 173 and then you want to go ahead and um, no I'm sorry correct me let me correct myself you want to let it get up to 273 I mean to 238 let me 238 guys it's 238 once it gets up to 238 you want to pull turn the heat off and let it come down a little bit and let it kind of sit rest for about a minute then you want to add in your vanilla flavoring and you want to add in your butter and you're going to add in your pecans. And then you're going to let it get down to about 172, between 172, 175. And then you're going to start beating it. Like you're going to beat the hell out of this chocolate because um, you want to get rid of that shininess that's in it because that's what's going to help it to set. You want to beat it until it's dull and sticky. So it's getting ready to start coming to a boil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place my candy thermometer in there. And I'm just going to wait for it to come up to the temperature that I need it to. Like I said, you don't want to really touch it a lot. At this point, you just want to let it come up to a boil and just leave it alone. So as soon as this gets up to a boil and it gets right, I'll be back to show you guys what it looks like. And we're going to start working on putting the fudge together. See you guys back here in a second. Alright guys, as you can see, it is starting to boil. So now we're going to take it and turn it down to low. And we're going to just let it simmer. So we've turned it down on low and now it's just going to simmer for about 5 minutes. And at this point, you really do not want to stir. You just want to let it kind of cook. And you want to go ahead and place the candy thermometer in there. And like I said, you want to let it get up to 238 degrees.
And you definitely do not want to stir it at this point. And you guys can see that it's coming up. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the camera a little bit. Well, no, I can't move right now. We're almost at the boiling point. So I'm just going to keep staying and stay right here with it because it's the most important part. Like I said, <clears throat> after you mix everything up and you get it all dissolved together, you want to turn it up and you want to let it come to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, you want to cut it down low and you just want to let it simmer and you want to let it get up to 200 and. 38 degrees and then you're going to cut the heat off and as you guys can see this is bubbling like lava and we're at right at two to almost at 220 degrees so we don't have much further to go I'm gonna see if I can zoom the camera out a little bit We're almost there, guys. And like I said, you definitely do not want to stir it at this point. You want to be as still as possible while holding this thermometer to keep up with the temperature of this fudge. And as you guys can see, like, it was not as... It, it just... Once I put it, um, the heat up and started to let it boil, it just kind of like doubled in, in the pot. And it's basically the sugar because it has two cups of sugar. And that is a lot of sugar. And that is why fudge is so delicious because all the sugar in the cocoa. Alright guys, when this reaches 238, we will I will be right back. Not we. Like I got multiple personalities. I will be right back. Alright guys, so as you can see right now we are at <clears throat> one, I mean two, not one, but 230. So we have eight more degrees to go, as you can see right here. And then we will be ready to add in <clears throat> the butter. The vanilla and the pecans. So as you can see, this process right here takes a little bit longer um, because you definitely need to make sure this chocolate and sugar and milk come up to temperature. So you, as you can see, this part right here is already to start to set. So all I'm gonna do once we get to 238 is just start to mix all this in. So I'll bring you guys back when I'm ready to start mixing everything in loose. All right, guys. So now we're gonna go ahead and turn it off we are up to temperature now as you can see there's the fudge mm -hmm. so now we have that up to temperature I'm gonna go ahead and just scrape the edges down I'm not gonna mess with that part too too much But we are definitely in business right now. Alright, so I'm going to just take this off the heat. And then I'm going to just pull this to the side because it is really stinking hot right now. And unplug that and just push that over there. Oh my gosh. So, as you can see, it's done. I'm going to let this cool for a minute. 
I just wanted to scrape down the sides of the pot. <clears throat> I'm sorry if you guys can't see my beautiful face, but this is very important, this part right here. So we're going to let this sit for about five, like three minutes. I say three minutes and just let it cool because I want it to come back down to temperature a little bit for it to stop boiling. That's why I went ahead and removed it from the heat. So what you're going to need now is you're going to need your vanilla. You're going to need your four tablespoons of butter. And you're going to always um, also need your pecans. So what I am going to do right now is I am going to go ahead and I'm going to add in some of the pecans. I don't think I'm going to add all of these in, but I'm going to add a good amount of them in. I might just add all of them. I like the little nutty. That's a little. I'll save those for my oatmeal in the morning. Those little crumbs. All right. So we're just going to go ahead and just push that around in there. And it's it stopped boiling, so it's okay for me to go ahead and add everything else over in there. I think I'm gonna add the rest of those pecans in there, y'all. Okay. So now we're going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. And we're going to add in the butter. It's starting to cool down, so I'm just going to keep stirring it. And what you want to do is you want to keep stirring this until it gets a dull look. You don't want it to have that shiny sheen of a consistency. So you're really going to have to stir this fudge. So I'm trying to hold it at an angle so you guys can see it. And it's starting to get stiff already. So if you feel like this is not enough, <clears throat> then you can definitely double the batch. However, I would recommend using a larger pot or saucepan because this stuff started to cook up and like boil like lava. And it was definitely, um, <clears throat> if I would have tried to double the batch, it would have boiled out of the pot. So you see how shiny it is? You just want to keep stirring until you get that shine out of it. Until it gets like a sticky paste, um, consistency. And it should start to thicken up at this point, and mine is definitely starting to thicken up because, honey, I'm over here. I got the spoon backwards. I'm switching arms. My, my arm doing P90X on me over here, but it's looking the right way. So I'm going to just keep stirring it up, and when I get it to the consistency that it needs to be, because you're going to keep stirring. Like I'm going to be here a good five, ten more minutes stirring this. So... When I get it to the consistency that I want, I'm going to come back and show you guys. But as you can see, it's definitely starting to thicken up. Y'all, I'm getting a workout. Like, I'm, I'm getting out of breath. I forgot how hard it was to make fudge. Jeez. What a fudge. All right, guys, I'll be right back with you guys. All right, guys, as you can see, it's starting to lose the shine. And um, at this part is where, like, if you have a second set of hands around, you really need to ask because um, this is really starting to set now. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to just keep stirring it. Until I get that sheen off of it. You want it to be dull. You don't want it to have any kind of shine to it or anything. The dull, the better. You cannot over mix fudge. I repeat, you cannot over mix fudge. However, you can definitely under mix it. And that's where a lot of people go wrong when they're making 
fudge. Girl, arthritis, carpal tunnel, it's all starting to show up now. But, um, I almost got it to where it needs to be. I'm going to just hold it up so you guys can see it. You see how this part over here is? Like, you want all of it to look like that. You want to stir it until it has no sheen at all. Like, ooh, that's so hot. Ah. Yeah, and see, we definitely need to go back into the center of it and just mix it all the way up because <clears throat> that's going to be very important. And as you guys can see, it's starting to get really stiff. And um, yeah, so I'm going to stir this about two or three more minutes and I think I'll have it to where I need it. And then I'm going to show you guys how to put it in the pan. Because that's going to be really important. It's already started to like get to where I need it. Alright guys, see you back here in a second. Alright guys, so our fudge is definitely where we want it to be. It's not shiny it has no shine to it whatsoever so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and put it into this glass bowl and y'all i am so out of breath like <clears throat> um i think it's time to get back to the gym i took a little break because i was sick i was really sick when i got back from chicago <clears throat> and um before that i had just came from um north carolina and I just haven't really been getting into the gym like I need to. And I am out of breath, yo. This fudge let me know that I'm all cute and not healthy. How about that? But okay, so we have everything out of the pot. And just like that. So I already got a nice little thing. Stop dish water waiting on me. And we're going to begin pushing this down into the pan. Why it's still cool because you do not, I mean hot, because you do not want this to cool before you get it into this dish. And you want to make sure you are spreading it out evenly too. Okay. Make sure your hands are clean when you are making fudge because you're going to be using them a lot. And clean hands are very important. Especially around this time of year when a lot of germs and stuff are going around. You know what I'm saying? Alright guys, so we have our fudge. And now we just have to let it sit and cool for about two or three hours. And as soon as it cools down and set, I'm going to cut it up and let you guys see what it looks like. I ain't going to lie. Y'all, I'm so out of breath from beating that chocolate. Like that fudge, it spanked my booty, okay? So, like, I'm really, really, really tired. <laughs> I'm really out of breath. So this fudge better be popping to the Jesus, okay? But yes, it's done, and we just need to let it cool down. Then I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning up my kitchen. And I'll be back to cut this and let you guys see what it looks like. I know y'all can't taste it, but you can see what the end result is. You know what I'm saying? All right, I'll see you guys back here in about an hour. YouTube time is like five minutes, but it's really an hour. <laughs> All right, see you guys back here in a second. All right, guys, we are back, and the chocolate fudge has set, and I'm so excited. So here we go. <clears throat> so I have this knife because I don't think I'm going to be able to get it out of here without cutting it. So um, 
I'm going to put it into these little bags. So I'm going to give it out to some of my neighbors and a couple friends because I do not need to eat this whole thing of fudge by myself. That would definitely be a no-no. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and cut it. And it says it's supposed to be like 60 something squares, but I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> so I'm going to just cut it. And then I'm going to remove it from the pan. And you, cut, you need to be careful when you cut it because it will break on you a little bit. Mmm, mmm, mmm. This is so delicious, guys. Okay. So let's get a couple pieces out. Let me get something to put it on. So let's see. OMG. So look, y'all. There we go. We got some fudge. My family is going to be so mad at me. Some of the pieces are kind of breaking up a little bit, but that's okay. Mmm. My mom used to make fudge all the time when I was a little girl. Um, I used to love to watch my grandmother cook, but my mom was a baker. Um, and that's where I basically got my love of <coughs> baking from was her because she baked a lot during the holidays. She baked all year round. Like she just... Um, she seemed to, even when she wasn't at her best, to be um, happy when she was baking something for us. Like, she would always make us, like, brownies and chocolate chip cookies, um, snack cakes. If you can name it, she would make it for us if she could find a recipe. And she took a lot of pride in that. And that's one of the things that I remember about her. And when I bake, I think that's why I get so happy because... It just takes me back to a time where um, she was here with me and I could, um, you know, watch her bake and we could do things together. So that's one of the reasons I love to bake because it just gives me so many happy memories. So I'm not doing a very good job of cutting this fudge up, but, you know, it's supposed to be in small squares. But, <sighs> oh, my God, you guys. So this is what it looks like. Now we're gonna take these little pieces. I'm gonna finish cutting up a couple, like one more row, and I'm gonna put it into these little bags. And I'm going to send this to work with Mr. Reginald tomorrow, so he can give it to a couple people. Um, I have a friend who always tells me that I never ever make her, I never save her anything from my channel when I make stuff. So I'm definitely going to make sure that she gets some fudge tomorrow and um, yeah this recipe it's really easy you just gotta have some warm power when it comes to um, knocking the machine off of the fudge other than that it's it's a really easy thing now these squares are looking a lot better yeah this is so good oh my god I can't wait to eat this fudge y'all like mmm this is so ridiculous it's just Mm, mm, mm. Y'all see that? That is delicious. It just it smells so good. I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm afraid for my life, y'all, because I don't know what I'm gonna do when I turn this camera off. Okay? Like I'm afraid. I'm really afraid. I'm scared. <laughs> okay, so we have a few of them that are cut up. And what I'm going to do is I like to use these little party bags. So say if you want to do like a little treat for your friends that work around the office or you have your friends over. Or you just want to give something out um, for the holidays as a little treat. You want to be all pants or smiling. This is what you would do. You would get these little bags. They're by Wilton's. Um, but you can put like chocolate cup pretzels in them. Peppermint. You put anything in them. And they come with like a hundred of them in there. And it also has the little um, silver, I forgot what they call these. Um, these. I don't know, but the little things that you wrap around them, you know. The little twist ties, that's what I call them. So what I like to do when I'm going to hand stuff out like this, I just like to take a 
probably two or three pieces. I'm going to put three pieces in each bag. I'll just put three pieces in there. And it just looks all extra fancy and stuff. I think, yeah, three pieces will fit. I'll put three nice pieces in there. Because you really, when you make fudge, you don't need a lot of it. And you just want to twist it just really gently. And just take one of your little silver ties and place around there. And this is like so perfect to hand out for the holidays. Like, you know, and if you wanted to, you could write a little note and tie it on there. You can get some little Christmas note, like little Christmas pieces of paper and, you know, write a little note and tie it on there. But yeah, this is really easy to hand out for the holidays. It takes a little bit of time. You can probably make two batches and get a lot of it. Um, but yeah, three pieces. So we're going to do it one more time. And um, yeah, I'm definitely going to get rid of these because... I'll eat the whole thing of fudge. I love fudge, y'all. I'm going to tell y'all a quick story. It's going to be a slash story time where I bag these little pieces up. So, like I was telling y'all, my mom loves to bake. And the first time I had fudge, my mom made it. And after she had given us some, she was like, you guys, <clears throat> me and my older sister, Alfreda, she was like, you guys do not eat any more of that fudge. It's going to make y'all sick. So, she went to take a bath. And me and my sister got into the fudge in the refrigerator and we ate half of the pan it was a big pan because my mom when she made stuff she made big pans and stuff so anyway we got our little fast behind into the fudge and we ate so much of the fudge we were sick we had diarrhea and we were throwing up we ate fudge we were sick for days my mom didn't even kick our ass because <laughs> we were so sick her whipping us would have would not have had any effect. It's because we were just so sick from the fudge. Like we were sick. So you definitely need to watch how much you eat because it can make you sick. Because it's just sugar. It's pure sugar. It's sugar, milk, and cocoa powder. So yeah. So we're gonna bag up a couple more of these. You guys, I have really been enjoying like my new setup, my new camera. I have a monster, I have all my lights, I have some new equipment and I'm really excited I'm so happy that um, I could bring you guys better videos and um, I'm just excited I hope you guys will stick around like I said the number of people who've been coming over to the channel has been growing and I'm so happy and so blessed about that so if you are a new subscriber and you and you just subscribe thank you so much if you've been hanging around from day one thank you so much I really really appreciate it um the first giveaway i did here on bam girl cafe has already been closed out so i will be giving her her crock pot soon and i, I started um i have a makeup video that's going to probably go up before this one but i started another giveaway for a 25 dollars sephora gift card for my my loves who like makeup because y'all know my channel is variety and that giveaway for the makeup will be going on until December the 5th so check that video out it will be up before this one so if you check this one out and you don't check that one out go back and check it out if you are interested in that gift card <clears throat> so yeah I have really I really enjoyed this like I'm really I feel like I can be the longer you you know you do these videos easier it becomes to talk to the camera and to come up with better ideas and I just get so excited on filming day like nothing can stop me like I get sleep the night before I do a face mask I just be so excited to do these videos I don't know if you guys can notice that but like it just makes me feel good like you know so we're gonna bag up a couple more pieces and uh, I'm gonna let you guys get on with y'all day I'm going to try not to eat all this fudge, all this love, and um, I'll see you guys back here in a couple of days. I love you guys. I'm going to be trying to get um, one video. For right now, my videos will probably be going up on like Friday or Saturday. I'm definitely going to get one video up a week, but I'm going to start pushing to get two up because my goal is to be on schedule and up and running full time on YouTube.
by January. And damn it, it is going to happen because I really, really enjoy doing these videos. And I, I enjoy the interaction. So if you um, have something you'd like to say, don't be afraid to leave a comment. I'm down for constructive criticism. Just don't be mean. I'm a sensitive girl. But um, leave a comment down below on videos. Uh, you would like to see food ideas. Um, if you would like to see me do a kitchen talk segment. Um, just whatever you want to see on the channel. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And I will definitely try to get that th those things up to you guys. I really don't get a lot of requests. Every now and then I get one. And I know I was being kind of slow about getting them out. But I was getting them out. So if you have something that you want to see here at Bama Girls Cafe. Then don't be afraid to mention it. Because I'll definitely try to get it out. Just keep it PG. Um... Not, you know, because sometimes people let their kids watch the videos. And I know I cuss a little bit. I got the cussing spirit. But I'm working on it, okay? I'm working on it. Well, with that being said, remember, guys, food is love. I love you guys. I'll see you guys back here in a couple of days. Because if I don't get off this camera, I'm going to stand here and run my mouth. But remember to treat people the way you want to be treated. I love you guys. And I will see you back here in a couple of days. So... Have a good time. Enjoy your holiday. Thanksgiving is coming up. And uh, just love on your family because you never know. Um, this may be the last time you get to spend time with someone during the holidays. So make the best of it. Just not the holidays. But just make the best of every day because that is what is most important. So I love you guys and I'll see you back here in a couple of days. And remember, food is love. <laughs>